Today's challenge, a barking mad dachshund whose owners have become prisoners in their own home. We cannot leave the house for longer than 20 minutes because he starts to bark. Becoming a bit of a nightmare. And when they do make it outdoors, their pint-sized pooch takes his big attitude with him wherever he goes. We need some help. In Hampshire, couple Ashley and Zoe live with their two-year-old dachshund, Otis. They both have children from previous relationships and thought little Otis would be the perfect late addition to their family. I think maybe Otis was the child that we could have had together. He's quite the character. Loves to be around people. But their dream of a perfect puppy has turned into a nightmare. <laughs> It's actually like having a loud, crying, angry baby in the house. And when he's left home alone, he barks himself into a frenzy. Yeah, that gets stressful. We definitely. can't leave our house at all. We, we, and I know you feel guilty. It does make me feel very anxious if I'm out and I look at, on my phone at the indoor camera and I see him pacing and barking. <laughs> And Zoe's not the only one who's anxious. Being left home alone is something Otis hasn't had much time to get used to. We got Otis in lockdown, so I think that that's obviously, unfortunately, where a lot of the issues stem from. But although Otis doesn't like being left in the house, he doesn't want to go out either. And he takes his attitude outdoors with him. He's really Jekyll and Hyde. He'll just flick a switch and, and he'll be off. Barking at any dog, big or small. And Zoe and Ashley are feeling the strain. I did sell him the dream and it's really turned into a nightmare. I thought, you know, life could be better without a dog. Zoe and Ashley need Victoria's help before Otis drives the couple apart. It bring me to tears, to be honest. I hate it. Because he shouldn't be like this. He's such a nice dog and he just... You can't take him anywhere. Thankfully, dog expert Victoria Stilwell is on her way to help tackle Otis's tantrums. Now, dachshunds tend to be quite feisty and very curious and a little nervy. And as I understand it, Otis takes these traits to a whole new level. At a mere nine inches tall, the low-riding dachshund has a fiery personality in a tiny sausage-shaped package. First bred in Germany, dachshunds are scent hounds and are known for their incredible sense of smell. With a talent for sniffing out prey, tunneling and barking. Today, their intelligence and inquisitive nature make them a popular choice. But beware, without proper training, they're capable of returning to their hunting roots, chasing, barking, and digging their way through your family home. Yes, I can hear. Come on in. Hold on, let me shut the door and then... Don't okay. worry, we'll move when that normally stops. Yes. OK. So, little one, tell me a little bit about him. We got him in lockdown. He's a lockdown puppy. He is, unfortunately. Oh. And as things started to open up, we realised that he wasn't very happy about us leaving the house. What is it like? when you go out. So that is mainly pacing up and down and he'll start to howl. He's on edge. Is he excited to go outside? No, it's the complete opposite, yeah, isn't it? it? What yeah. does he do? He will run and hide. Oh. We'll get really? the lead out. Yeah, he'll cower under the table. His first proper encounter with a dog that he didn't know resulted in the dog wanting to play with him and pushing him over a few times. And then in an instant, he just went Rah! And literally from that moment, it's like something switched in him. Every dog he sees, it's like he feels he has to get in there first. So you, you're a prisoner in your own home, really. You're stuck in here. Yep. 
and then out there, you're, it's just a nightmare. It's horrific. Is he causing a rift between you? Perhaps I was sold some of the dream of a dog. I do feel I railroaded him into it. And that causes yeah. a problem because when we can't go out, then the, then he'll be like, well, you wanted the dog. Right. Well, there's a lot going on here. And I'm going to observe these things to begin with. So I'd like to start by looking at the footage that you've already taken of what happens when you do go out. Okay? Yeah. OK. And this is caught. From this your is on our indoor camera. Indoor camera. When we've gone. You see that he's looking outside the window. What he does right then, his body tenses, he rises up, he puts his head out, his tail goes up. Mm. Next, Victoria wants to see what happens when Otis is taken out for a walk. And once again, his anxiety is clear. He's very tense. Yeah, see his little legs? Yeah. OK. If he were to sort of... Yeah. So now he'll just wander around panic-stricken. I don't like it. I don't like it. It's clear that Otis's anxiety about going out is making Zoe extremely anxious too. And it gets worse when they get to the front door. We go into another form of panic mode now. So he's basically now just tense. He's literally ready to erupt. He's ready to erupt out of the door. Let's attempt to go out, shall we? Yep. Okay. Good boy. <laughs> Interesting, after that, he immediately lifts his leg. I think it's a panic response because yeah, it happens yeah. all the so time. He's, just, he's hyper vigilant, isn't he? Yeah, he's the whole just, time. He's like, he's on edge, he's on guard. There. I feel this environment is so loaded with scary things. He can't relax, even though he'd like to sniff. He can't give himself permission to no. sniff. This environment is too polluted. I think we've had enough. Come on. I'm going to go in. Yeah. Button. With observations over, it's time for Victoria to sit down with Zoe and Ashley to give them her verdict on the situation. Wow, I'm stressed out <laughs> watching you and watching poor Otis. If I could speak in his voice, I would say, I'm Otis and I do not feel safe. And that's the headline. This is a little soul that, that is just trying to trying to fit in, trying to understand. But he does have a lot of issues. But I'm going to say now that you have to stop arguing. Please. I feel like I've let him down crying again. I just feel really bad. It's tough when you, you know, you realise that the thing that you love so much is going through this. I mean, hell, you need support. You need to be there to support her. But I'm glad you called me. So let's start with the separation issues. I think he has just more attachment issues. This is a dog that I feel like needs comfort, mm. cocooned. He loves to be under things. Yeah, OK. Right, that's number one, so we're going to address that. Number two, we're going to address the absolute terror he has with having that lead put on and that harness put on and being outside. And he needs places where he can go to and just go, oh, I can just do what I love do because I'm a dachshund and I love sniffing. Yeah. But you see all outside, you saw outside he couldn't oh, sniff. No. And now we start afresh, all right? Yeah. Brilliant. You ready? Thank you. Yeah. Ready? Absolutely. <laughs> Let's go. First up, Victoria wants to tackle Otis's barking when he's left home alone. He likes closeness. So, I have something for him. Oh, see here. Look at that. What's that? What's that? Otis! <laughs> he's digging. He's going in. I think this gives him the hug. Yeah. That when you're out, that he needs. This is his pacifier. OK. okay. He needs his blanket. So I know you've got a blanket. When I came in, you saw how he... Yeah. 
Because I tell him off. I get no. him off of it the whole time. Yeah, and don't tell him okay. off. Okay. Or give him something different. Yeah. There, see? I'll just take this off and then he can focus on that. While the den gives Otis security, the chewer acts a bit like a dummy, easing his anxiety by taking his mind off being alone. You can go. OK. See you later. I'll stay with him for a bit. He might follow you, but then he might come back. We'll see. We're off. Thank you. OK. As soon as Ashley and Zoe leave the room, Otis immediately takes himself to the safety of his new den. No, I'm going to leave him now, too. I can't believe it. We've left the room and he's with the Kong that Victoria's given him. He's laying happily on his blanket. It's a miracle. <laughs> I've never known it. In Hampshire, dog expert Victoria Stilwell is helping Zoe and Ashley with their overly anxious lockdown pup, Otis. Next up, tackling his fear of the harness. It's really sad to see how much he does not like his harness. We know why, because he knows it's walk time, so he runs away from you. Well, I want to get him to love his harness. Okay. I'm just going to get him over here. Otis! And I'm going to throw a piece of... throw a piece of food on the ground. That's it. Look at that. So, first of all, I'm just going to get him searching and sniffing. And then I'm going to bring this, and I'm not going to make a big deal of that, to bring the harness out, and I'm just going to go, oh, I like that. Yeah. You said he knows touch, don't you? He does. OK. Touch? Yes. Teaching your dog to touch their nose to your hand for a treat is a great way to focus their attention. As Otis already knows this, Victoria uses touch to help him get closer to the harness. And I'm just going to handle the harness. I'm going to put it up here. So I'm moving that harness around. Let's go get that. Mm. See how I'm mixing it up? The aim is to desensitize Otis to the harness allowing Victoria to build up to putting it on him without triggering his anxiety. Harness up. Good boy. Oh, you're so good, see? Oh, thank you very much. And then we're going to just take it off him. Harness off. Give it a shake. That's it. <laughs> now it's time for Zoe to give the technique a try. Yes. OK. I want you to start moving that harness around, still playing the touch game. Touch. Yes. Now you're going to pick up the harness and have him touch the harness. Touch. Yes. Okay, well done. Fantastic. But you're going to... Oh, I'm doing put, it wrong. ..put the food the other side And the then harness. he's going to put his head yeah. through. And then you can put it on him. Let him bring his yes. head through. Tell him, good boy, or yes, Ooh, yes. Nice. All right. So that's probably enough. That's it. And then you go back to where you were. Good. And tell him, good boy. Good boy. You're building up the yeah. trust again. Yeah. You're going to have to do baby steps yeah. with him, right? <laughs> we'll get there. Don't go too, don't, like, do five-minute no. sessions, two, three times, times a day. day. That's it. Yeah. I feel positive, actually. Obviously, it's going to take us uh, a little while, but, yeah, I'm excited. Next, it's time for the last part of Otis's training, conquering his fear of the outside world. Right now, outside is a scary place to be, especially outside your house is poisoned, but that doesn't mean to say you're going to stop walking him altogether, because you are going to take him to places where he can feel more comfortable. Yep. Yeah. And I also want to give him a skill, a skill where he uses his incredible Dachshund nose and that's why we're going to teach him the find it skill. OK. Which is a bit of a game. Thank you. So what I'm going to do is very simple. Just throw food, and when he goes and gets it, I'm going to say, find it. OK. OK. Find it. Yes. 
Now I'm going to throw something away from me and then I'm actually going to drop another treat by my foot. Now he's going to have to use his nose to find it. OK. okay? Sniffing is thought to lower a dog's heart rate, as well as reduce secretion of the stress hormone cortisol. So teaching Otis to sniff for treats on a walk should help calm him down. Find it. See? Yeah. I'm going to stand up and I'm going to do it and move it around a little bit more, OK? Find it. <laughs> good boy. You're so good. Did you see that? You put your nose on the ground and you got it. That was a proper sniff out then. Isn't it beautiful? And then we take the game outside. OK. OK. Yeah. <laughs> With Otis's dachshund nose fully activated, it's time to see if he will finally be able to enjoy a walk. I've brought you here because this is a secure field. It's a wonderful space, no other dogs, he can feel safe. And this is just the start of his journey now, reintroducing him back into society. Secure fields, where you can book some time for just you and your pup, are all around the UK. It's the perfect place for Otis to engage his nose. And with all the new smells to explore, he should begin to relax enough to start enjoying his walk. Yes. Looking and then he's sniffing. I can feel his less tension. He's out in front. Yeah. He's putting his nose down. He's discovering his environment. He's doing the seeking behaviour all by himself because there's so much to smell, yeah. but I also want you to be able to play the game out. Yeah. You know, I want you to just play with him. I will take that lead. It is. It is. Find it. <laughs> Boy. <laughs> all right. Ashley, you're going to take the lead. How are you feeling about this? Amazed. Yeah, really impressed. Didn't and his great. nose is down. He's literally showing an interest in his environment. It's amazing stuff. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> well, well done. Good. I'm going to leave you to go off on a walk by yourself. Off you guys Thank go. You. OK, welcome. Yeah, bye this isn't just a dog walk, even though it might look like it. This is Otis finally seeing that outside is safe and fun and being empowered enough to be able to sniff and play games. I think they continue this. It's not going to be long before Otis is going to be walking in his neighbourhood and maybe in the future having a few more doggy friends. In the three weeks since Victoria's visit, Otis has enjoyed more sniff based walks, and Zoe and Ashley have been working hard to build his confidence. And now, Victoria's back to find out how their pint-sized pup is doing. Hey. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Come in. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, darling. Oh, I love you. I do. I think you're very special. How is it going? It's going well. Yes. It's going to be slow, but we are gaining his trust. I've had a couple of 40 minutes where I've been to the shops, and in fact, we thought that the indoor camera had broken. Well, I did. And then you told me it was because he hadn't moved. Emotions, I yes. do love the fact that, you know, that you have had some wins. He's had some wins. Yeah. Where he can be by himself yeah. for a good amount of time yes, and be OK. he has. He has. He's definitely calmer for not being walked outside okay. of the front door. I feel like that worry's gone. We've been doing lots ah. of find it in Dad's garden. Good. So he's genuinely been using his nose loads. Really? So I feel like that's really positive. Yes. Yeah, oh, great. Really positive. Well, well done for working hard on all of this. Once you think he is ready, then you can begin to work on exposing him around other dogs. He's a great, great dog. <laughs> Thank you. He's a great dog. <laughs> We've definitely noticed less stress of Otis. We've noticed him become a lot calmer. Before, we would just be at each other, whereas now I think we take more time to think, how does he feel? Otis was so anxious when I first met him. He hated being walked outside, and he didn't like being left alone. But by relieving pressure 
that he didn't have to go outside in the neighborhood and providing for his needs inside. He's like a different dog. The next challenge the family has is to start exposing him around other dogs. That is going to be difficult, but I know they can do it. Thanks for watching. If you love It's Me or the Dog and want more dog training tips and tricks, visit my official site positively.com. And if you're interested in learning more about becoming a dog trainer, check out the Victoria Stillwell Academy. Links to both sites are in the description. I'll see you online.